Welcome to Das Geek. This is the video you all have been asking for. Nay, the video you've been begging for. We have Chad, the developer of Gods and Nemesis here to put Radeon 7 to the test. So we don't really have any baseline because you run AMD on your main machine. Right. Um, you have a good video card, the Vega 56 already. So really we're just gonna be comparing your experience in utilizing the Radeon 7 in this machine versus your machine and using Torque 3D and Blender and doing some tests there. Some of this is CPU based, some of this is GPU based, but it's really the all the whole package together. What we're looking at doing is we are in Arch Linux naturally because OpenCL was the easiest to get running in AMD on Arch Linux. It literally was one command versus having tons of issues trying to get it with the Radeon 7 to work in Ubuntu. So thus another uh, feather in the cap of Arch here. So we are in Arch Linux. We're going to just have Chad go through his normal workflow of things that he would look at, and he's gonna tell us what he's doing and see if this enhances the experience from a developer standpoint and do something different with the card than just playing video games. Because one of the things that we talk about with this card, although it was marketed as a gaming card, it has a lot in common with the seven nanometer uh, display GPU that was used for developers. It has the same HBM2 memory in there and it shares a lot of characteristics with that. So you could do more with this card than just play games and get frames per second that go faster than your monitor can even handle anyways. You can actually develop a game in here and that's what we're going to kind of talk about and we're going to use some of these tools just to show some development and paint some stuff so with that chad you are up all right so this is an asset that i had used i'm using the forest editor and i'm going to move this out so you can actually see it's a shaoshar tree which is an alien tree within my world and um, i made various levels of detail so this first one has exaggerated levels of detail, and I'll show you what that means in a moment. So now you're gonna start brushing this tree. You're making the size big so you can start brushing this in. But how many would you actually put in your game normally? Because we're gonna to try to tax the video card, but normally you would just be kinda of sparingly putting them around, right? Probably about that many trees. You notice how they're popping in and out? Believe it or not, I, my force can only be about that big and, and with the video card that I'm using. Okay, with so, the Vega 56. Yeah. Okay. So otherwise it starts slowing down considerably. But also I use levels of detail. You notice how the trees are popping in and out in different. Yeah, you start getting to see more effects and colors and things as you get closer. Right. But you do that to lower the taxing on the system itself? Yeah, they, the, the system can only handle so many polygons at one time. So when you go further out, I have exaggerated these levels of detail. As an artist, eventually you would blend it together to where you can hardly notice the difference as you're getting closer or farther away from a tree. When you're close to a tree, you're going to get the full detail, right? So but as you get farther away from the tree, you notice that it kind of changes out the tree to lower levels until it's simply a picture, which is called a billboard. And those pictures actually rotate with, with the camera at any given time. And you can see the frames per second get much higher once right. you start pulling back on that because while your drawing distance is increasing, your level of details of what's on the screen isn't because it's going to a flat image. Now, this isn't done like you said. You're going to be putting transition levels as you continue to create your game right. so that it doesn't look you know, so odd when you're right. <laughs> kind of far away from it. But the up close, they look beautiful. Those are awesome looking trees. Well, thank you. Yeah, they these uh, trees you can actually harvest in my game and actually get wood for, you know, the survival mode. So I'm going to be working on that, pretty um, finishing that out. But the levels of detail I have to see as an artist. So I've exaggerated, you know, I made it a glow texture as it's a certain distance. That's exaggerated. So eventually I can actually pull it together. I had to know if the levels of detail were actually working because with Torque, you actually have to put it in the um, blender itself and actually separate it through a hierarchy. So, so as um, a game developer, what you're constantly trying to battle is what are the systems of the people who are going to play my game? Now you have, you're using a 32-bit engine, as I understand. Yeah. You're kind of going after a market of people with, you know, low mid-end video cards to be able to play your game and high-end, of course, naturally. But you're not looking to make the next, um, you know, Unreal game where it's right. just to push 
graphics only in the right. highest tier. But if somebody was doing that as a developer, if you wanted to let your imagination go, you you get constrained by the hardware that's in your system. Right. So each one of these trees is about 3,000 polygons, so it, it adds up quickly. So you have to find ways to uh, trick the system into trading out the trees so it's not too taxing on the CPU or the GPU, depending on what sense. you're doing. So in this case, you know, as you can see, the levels of detail are there. Um, actually, in, in Blender, I can show you. So here, the, this is the original Shaoshar tree where it's trading out the levels of detail. You notice on the side it has the 256, the 128, and 512. That's the amount of pixels at what point it trades out the tree. On the screen, if it's 512 pixels or more, it's going to be the most biggest detail. And it gets down to 256, it'll trade out to the other one, and then 128. And up here, we have the, just the pictures of the tree. And that's the, you know, the farthest distance. Um, it will trade it out to just a picture. So it's not, it's, a picture is nothing for the CPU or the GPU to handle as comparison to a full 3,000 polygon uh, tree. Now, actually, this has four, th I'm sorry, this has 4,352 faces. So that's, that, you add that up with hundreds of trees combining together, it's going to get, you know, pretty hefty when you get a forest going. So when you look at this right now, because I'm not a game developer, and I look at this, this looks nothing like the tree I saw even when you clicked on the 5.12 version right. that is in your game, and that's because you have to add graphics that you basically fold over top of the tree. Right, and plus I'm using a separate file on your system. I don't have it linked to the actual materials that I was using, so it would look a little bit better if actually it's in material mode now. I can put it into solid mode. That looks a little bit better, but... Really, what it was trying to do is pull in the materials that it can find the materials, so it puts it, you know, it renders it as pink. Um, but that, you know, that's it's an interesting default color. I like the silver better. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think the silver does look a lot better. So that's that's the tree there. I took out the levels of detail to show, um, you know, what we're going to do um, here in the video a little later on. But as you can see, um, the main concept for a game designer is they want to use tricks like this, like levels of detail to trade out the models at the appropriate time so that if you're far away from the forest, you're going to see a whole forest, but you're not going to see every little detail of the trees, and you don't need to see that kind of detail. Um, but when you're in the middle of the forest, you want to see the trees. Right. So This is what I've been trying to explain in the video I did on this video, this video card first, is everybody is focusing on benchmarks to decide whether a card is good or bad. And that right. benchmark, of course, is in the video game. In those benchmarks, they are throwing everything they can at the screen at once. Right. They're showing all faces of an object, which is not how you actually design a game, to basically see, well, this is the threshold the card can reach. It's interesting data. It's not like it's faulty data. It's just not the reality of what you experience when you're actually using the card in playing right. some of these games, what the experience is going to be like. And then there's the other facet of it, which is what can you develop with the game. So let's just say, for instance, you're ready to take Gods and Nemesis, and it's only going to be meant for players that have, you know, a $400 or more video card. So you're going to let your imagination go, and we're going to paint trees all over this place and make the stupidest, thickest forest <laughs> we possibly can. And I want people to pay attention to the frames per second up yeah, there that is because key. that's where we're going to be able to see at what point how many trees we can paint in this five-mile radius before uh, it actually starts hindering performance there. I don't have a way to count the trees, but um, so, you know, we're going to have to do rough estimates. It's probably about 50 trees. We got probably about 100 or 250 trees here right now. And that's times the 4,000 faces a piece. Right. But with the levels of detail, see, I'm far away. It's just pictures of those trees now. Right. So it's hardly doing anything. As you can see, it's 253 frames. It still happened to keep in memory where the trees are at and things like that. So that it still adds up, but it saves a lot of resources. So I'm going to go ahead and paint like crazy. And I have the brush at the biggest setting possible. You just go crazy we're just here. painting hundreds of trees 50 trees or more at a time and we're still at 160 190 we're going to try to at this distance just try to paint a ridiculous amount of trees where they're just pictures and then as we zoom in you'll start seeing now would your system be doing right now 
Um, I would be probably at 10 frames if I was lucky. So nice. we're still at 200 frames with all these trees. And here's the thing I keep telling people. When I did the video on the Radeon 7, and we showed benchmarks, not just running a benchmark and saying, oh, here's the number I got, but we showed benchmarks against other people submitting their systems, we were beating out a $1,300 2080 Ti card. And the reason is, is people have bottlenecks all over their system. You could have crappy RAM in your system. You could have a crappy inferior CPU and be running a $1,300 video card doing you a whole lot of almost nothing right. because you've got all these bottlenecks in your system. Are we still at 100? Now, this sure. would be the most ridiculous forest. I mean, you would have to name the game The Forest. <laughs> right. <laughs> And the whole idea... Which I thought about. <laughs> it's just to run into trees all right, uh, and chop them down. This would be a great area to uh, get all of the materials you need in a sandbox game, like your gods oh and nemesis. God. This thing just doesn't even care. It's like trees, what? Now, if we start going in closer, we should start seeing some frames dropping here. Because now we're going to start adding in all of these trees and then the level of detail... And you can see it's now getting to the point where we would consider in the gaming world unplayable, right? At right. 15 frames per second with all of that detail, generally you're wanting to be at 60 FPS. That's kind of the gold standard where most console gamers try to achieve. And in PC gaming, we want way above 60 frames per second when we're playing just because we like to rub it in the console gamers' faces a little bit and you get a little bit smoother gameplay and things. But... Um, you saw how much he painted there, and we're still able to do things. So that's pretty awesome. I didn't even add the wind effects yet, so I need to. That will slow things down considerably, and I think yeah, I we think may we... crash it. Yep, it's it's. I think it's done. Good. So we crashed it. We finally <laughs> hit the theoretical limit of painting all of those trees, and then coming in for the detail of the card. So we'll exit out of torque now. And then we'll go through and we're going to show you some more things of adding in wind effects and how that impacts the performance of a game. So these little these little tricks and things that people add into games like wind effects can have a tremendous effect on the performance of a game, which is why when you go into settings and they have options to turn that stuff off, if you're not running a ridiculous card like this, that would be what you do. And we can do a terminal here and X kill this. All right. So now let's uh, let's add the trees in. So I have to be, I need to be separated from the character, so I'll try to keep my camera down low to where about where he would be. Right, and what That's we right. want to do is see that counter get around 60 frames per second. Okay. And we should probably add the wind effects too. Really okay. Quick. So we have a wind emitter. So wind is literally a box. Yep, there it is. That's our wind. So wind <laughs> in a game is, for you as a developer, is just a box you add in that you add some math to. It says, hey, push this thing this much. Stay about right here. So about 100 or so trees right next to the character get you your 60 frames per second. That's a lot of trees, though. Wow, that added way more than I thought it was adding. <laughs> Holy moly. That is awesome. But notice the level of detail will take over, and then you start getting your frames back up course this is with wind effects on as well so what this is doing is randomly pushing the trees and forcing them to go into an animation mode right right and there's special ways to paint the trees inside of blender to allow this mode so it's unfair somebody with uh, my non-talent in game developing has a card like this but as a developer is this something you would look for oh definitely see the thing is is that i have to keep my trees around about like this so i I, you, I actually place them individually. This, you know, allows me to add in a bunch of trees randomly, but I actually have to place them individually with rocks and use other ways of making it look filled out as opposed to just adding a bunch of trees. And, of course, I have a lot of different species. This is just one of them. But, um, yeah, so th I, I would love to have a card like this because... I would be able to fill the entire world and maybe delete what I don't want as opposed to adding and then watching the frame rate and adding and watching the frame rate like I'm doing now. Now what you would do to cheat in this if you wanted to keep this level of detail in your game is you would create sections of your game for loading screens, right? That's right, and that's what I actually plan on doing 
is having like a section here that would load in the forest elements for that section. So it, it creates a load in screen, unfortunately, but that's what you have to do. And for the very, very far away portions of the forest, if you can still see them, it needs to be a picture um, that, that fills that area until your character gets to that point, And then, you know, you're able to load into that section. And it deletes all the other sections so it's not all um, hitting the CPU or GPU at the same time. So what we have here, for those who haven't gone to my website yet, which you should do, just so you know, is 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. We have a Ryzen 7 2700X in here, and we have the Radeon 7 video card and a 1,000 watt power supply and an NVMe drive. So this is kind of a beast of a machine and showing that Linux runs on the latest and greatest hardware really well, uh, and you could do a lot of great things with it here. Now, we talk about trees here in this, but and, and trees may seem boring to people, but believe me, if you had a game with nothing but sand in it, that's pretty boring too. But really, this could be monsters that you would be adding, painting hundreds of. This could right. be uh, rocks, mountains, birds flying in the sky, any number of things. We're just using trees because it's you're not native Linux user, and this isn't your normal environment, right. so you're just throwing stuff that you had readily available at the card to see kind of how it handles it. Yeah, so I'm actually really impressed with this card because it just uh, it just handles this so well. I mean, my my system right now would be at 10 frames per second. And, you know, no lie. There's just, um, and you just have to sparingly separate everything and go about it in a different direction. So if I had a card like this, I think it would, um, you know, allow me to explore um, a lot of different ways of, of adding what I want in a, in a better way. So. so that's awesome to hear. And I told you from the very beginning, if this sucked and you didn't like it or it wasn't what you expect to say exactly yeah. how you feel about it and to get the true story out because I'm not trying to sell people on Radio 7. In fact, if you watch my first video, it's the exact opposite. I tell people, for the most part, you don't need a card like this. There's no right. go with the RX 580, 590 if you're interested in gaming. But if you're interested in doing something other than just playing video games, that's where a card like this starts to make a big difference. So why do you have one, Ryan? Well, good question. <laughs> I guess just to show off the power of Linux. But uh, this is really meant for other uses. And, and so, frankly, are some of the NVIDIA cards out there that are ridiculously priced. But you could see, again, in those benchmarks that I ran, that we were beating some of those $1,300 cards. This is a $700 card because, and I think... A lot of that has to do with, number one, they're using crappy windows. But number two, they are uh, having bottlenecks in other areas of their system, meaning they didn't build the system to be completely the most high-end hardware from beginning to end. They picked little pieces here and there or kept a lower-end motherboard and CPU and then added that video card in, and therefore they're not competing with this system here, which if you spend $1,300 for a video card, you should be beating my $700 card. Like, that that should be a no-brainer there. So that's just kind of some of the points that I was trying to prove with this here. And uh, do you want to show your Dragon real quick? I know it's more CPU intensive, but we all love seeing the Dragon. If you remember, Chad, back in when I did the 30 Days of Linux, we did a similar test testing out my CPU and GPU with this Dragon here adding faces onto it. Now, this was interesting because this is mostly CPU rendering. Based. Right. And what you're going to do here is you're going to add a bunch of faces on. Well, explain to me what that means, adding a bunch of faces to this thing. Well, basically, uh, when I go into the mode here, the faces mode, I, I'm actually seeing all of the vertices that um, come together. You can have either three vertices that make a face or four. I always stick with four because Torque seems to deal with that better. Um, so all these faces together, you see that there is 9,373 faces. It's a all lot these, more than the tree. All these little boxes <laughs> are, you know, come together to form the object. So and that allows you more animation controls, the more boxes you have and things like that's that. That's right. So where these joints are, like where the arms are, if I had more faces here, it would, it would make for a more smoother modification of the mesh itself during animations. So the more faces you have, the closer to picture like you're going to get. So, but with a game um, like I, you know that I'm designing, you have to be careful with how many faces you have, 
you have too many faces, that's a lot of um, resources being utilized to process it. So from a gamer perspective, that's when the big monster comes on the screen and your video card just starts going, eh, eh, yes, eh, as it's trying to animate. <laughs> and that's what you try to stop as a game designer. You don't want that. But at the same time, you want it to look as, as good as possible. And computers are getting so um, amazing right now, it's getting to the point where these faces mean nothing. As you can see with the trees, we added hundreds and hundreds of trees and the frames per second, you know, really kept up pretty well with it. So, and it's just getting better from there. Well, see, this was my point too I was making. I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you look at like a PS4 game, and I showed some footage of this actually, versus a PC game, minus some shadows and some details. And of course, we know gaming on PC is better with the keyboard and mouse, that experience and the fine tune controls. It was very difficult to see the difference. And the point I was right. making there is a lot of these games are made from a developing standpoint. You want to make it work for Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox, right. everybody. So you're not going to push the power limits anymore since you want that multi-platform like we used to see. Because back in me in your day when we were using computers, the console games looked nothing like a PC game. Right. It was like two completely different worlds. Absolutely. And now Absolutely. it's not that case very often anymore. For the most part, what you see, uh, you're going to get higher frames per second, maybe some higher performance and more fine-tuned controls. But as far as the graphics, they're not painting stuff heavily enough to really push what the hardware in a computer is capable of because they want it to work on everything. So we got right. 9,000 faces right now. So we're going to split the faces, and it's just a simple button here on, on Blender. It's called Subdivide. And now I have 37,000 faces. And that, that's working pretty good. So 37,000 faces, if you were aiming at having everyone who plays your game have a $700 video card, right. this would work. It was, this and that's would a ridiculous fun. amount of faces, right? You could, it's, move, it's, you could have flesh moving and hair oh, moving yeah. at this point. I mean, basically, you would have a separate muscle for each individual hair if, it was, <laughs> <laughs> if you needed that. So this reminds me scale. of Final Fantasy, where you know how Final Fantasy games that... When they would go to those cut scenes and each hair is kind of flowing in the yes. wind and yeah. stuff like that, that's where you would animate things. Like right, that. that would be a separate entity altogether. That you would have something like this to create the animation, but you wouldn't use that same model for the game typically. Oh, I got you. Okay. So, all right, let's go a little bit heavier. Um, subdivide again. One hundred fifty-one thousand. Now it's getting kind of jagged. Yeah. Now this is using mostly CPU. Right. So if you have something like a thread ripper, that's where this is going to come more in handy than the Ryzen 7 2700X I have, for instance, which thread ripper, when you start getting into, you know, 32 cores, 64 threads, start getting into something that could handle stuff like this. But again, as a game developer, you'd be a moron because nobody could run your game. Right. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we could break it again. Let's go heavier. Into I think this will probably do it right here. Another okay. Subdivide. And it doesn't like it. I don't think it has done it yet. Nope. Now we have 608,000. So 608,000. Yeah, now it's like, oh, I don't like this at all. So 608,000, not going good. But let's subdivide it again and see if we can crash it. All right. I like your, breaking it's your, things. It's your computer. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how long this takes here. Yeah, so we should be getting into the million faces at this point right yeah it still has not processed this <laughs> it doesn't know what to do. there we go two million four hundred thirty three thousand now can you move around the dragon i just moved and let's see how long it takes oh there we go move again see i want you to reconsider in your game having this many faces <laughs> because just think i mean the dragon every hair on the dragon yeah every cell could be accounted for in an right. animation yeah, you have a microscope in my game. You can actually see the atoms. That's probably, <laughs> probably be important. <laughs> All right, I think that's everything we thought we were going to cover. Is there anything else you wanted to show? No, I think um, that pretty much covers it with the, the trees. That's an amazing card. I think it would be, I, I'm definitely going to look into um, this card for future development, I think. Absolutely. And you like to get a lot of my hand me down, so one day this probably will, will be, be your mine. card. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so treat it fairly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, man. People asked about you having you back on to do this because all that. the videos out there on YouTube were focusing on one thing, frames per second in video games, playing video right. games. A card like this, there's so much more you can do with it. 
we're only touching obviously if you're using CAD or other things there are other uh, ways that you could utilize the full power of this card and the ridiculous amount of RAM that it has and the style of RAM the high bandwidth memory that it has to put it to its limits this here what we're showing is CPU what we were showing before in the other game is a combo CPU and GPU working together but ultimately dude thank you very much thank you gods and nemesis still being worked on in beta right now right yep. so people can download it on steam yep. works in windows but we're slowly convincing him to come to the correct side of life and, and <laughs> right. go into linux um but uh he works... i'm a believer i just it just takes time to transition all that stuff unfortunately it's just a lot of work but... and you're looking at going to a new engine which we've talked yeah. about before of unreal potentially in the is it Unreal you're looking into? or I like Unreal a lot. Um, I haven't finalized exactly what direction I'm going to go, but um, I, I think Unreal seems to really capture all the things that I personally need. Yep. Yeah, so. And as long as you port it to Linux, which I believe is an option on Unreal, we'll be happy right. no matter what. Right. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.